You're watching Cyclone Education Week Part 3. Here's a reminder of the schedule for this week. While cyclones have probably been around for many thousands, maybe even millions of years, observations in the grand scheme of things are still relatively new, particularly in some parts of the world. First, let's take a look at the history of observations. It appears that worldwide legend's first mention of a tropical cyclone was the Kamikaze, two storms believed to be typhoons affecting the area around Japan in the years 1274 and 1281. In both these years, the Yuan dynasty, led by Kublai Khan, set out to conquer Japan in the name of the Mongol Empire. Both times, they ultimately failed, and the typhoons destroyed up to three quarters of the Mongol fleet. Elsewhere around the world, the first mention of storms was later. In the Atlantic, it was 1494, two years after Christopher Columbus's first voyage to the Americas. The first storm known to hit the United States was a storm that struck the western coast of Florida in 1523. The first known storm to hit Mexico beyond any doubt was in 1552 in Veracruz. Probably the first hurricane known to strike the northeastern United States was the Great Colonial Hurricane of 1635, believed to strike as at least a Category 3 hurricane, killing 46 or more. The first recorded storm of the North Indian Ocean came in 1721, when the city of Madras was severely damaged. The first known storm to strike Canada was probably the Newfoundland hurricane of 1775, which happened to be one of the deadliest, killing over 4,000 along the eastern seaboard. The first known storm to strike Indonesia occurred in 1778, and there were three others in the following century that caused significant damage there. The first recorded Eastern Pacific storm was spotted by a German ship in 1832 near the Hawaiian Islands, and seven years later another storm struck Mazatlan in Mexico. In 1848 the first storm of the Southwest Indian Ocean was observed, followed by the first Australian storm in 1872. Coming in late to the party was Brazil, whose only ever tropical cyclone landfall was Cyclone Catarina, striking the country in 2004. In this day and age, it's hard to believe that once upon a time, hurricane forecasting didn't exist, and it wasn't even a hundred years ago. The first hurricane warning service was set up in Cuba in 1873, followed by the United States two years later, after a major hurricane struck Texas. It was at this time that the first warning signals were inaugurated. The warning signal consisted of two red flags with black rectangles in the centre, and has been used for hurricane warnings ever since. However, whilst warning services went on to cover most of the Atlantic by 1920, it wasn't until after this time that actual track forecasts began to emerge. In 1944, the first regular Hurricane Hunter flights commenced, though the first flights into hurricanes occurred the year before. Its initial aim was to locate tropical cyclones that would otherwise remain undetected. Even with the arrival of satellite imagery later, these missions remain important to gaining information about the storm. The Atlantic was the second place to begin regular storm naming in 1950 using the military alphabet, followed by selected names beginning in 1953. This came a few years after the Western Pacific's typhoons were named by the US Navy, and in 1959 the Joint Typhoon Warning Center was established in that region. In 1988 the Japanese Meteorological Agency became responsible for forecasting typhoons. Then came the satellite era, which began in the 1960s, and by the end of the 1970s, the Atlantic and Western Pacific had satellites that pictured the whole regions every three hours. Over time, the quality of satellite imagery has improved and has moved on from just visible imagery to infrared and enhanced types of imagery that update around the clock every 30 minutes or less. Satellite imagery that updates every single minute already exists, and it will be interesting to see if this becomes a regular feature in the future. More recently, we've seen the development of computer models which predict in advance what will happen in the tropical regions and beyond. Generally, model accuracy is improving, but they are not always correct, especially if the forecast time is several days away and different models may conflict with each other in their forecast. On these models, the bluer colours denote low pressure, whilst the reds show high pressure. Here you can see how the models predicted Typhoon Haiyan last year. 
Note the amount of closed isobars, the dark circular lines, giving an idea of its forecasted intensity. In the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, the storm naming list runs alphabetically, beginning with A and ending at W, missing out the letters Q, U, X, Y and Z in the Atlantic, and just Q in the Eastern Pacific, thus ending in Z. If the naming list is exhausted, any further storms will be named according to the Greek alphabet. This was done in 2005 in the Atlantic. There are six separate naming lists, used in order every year and thus repeated every six years. If a particularly destructive storm strikes, it may be retired from that naming list and never used again. In the Western Pacific, each nation in the area submits a number of names to use for storms. There are several naming lists here too, but due to a larger and unpredictable amount of storms, more than one list may be used during the year. The Southwest Indian Ocean has a system similar to the Atlantic, beginning each year with the letter A. In Australia and the South Pacific there are also alphabetical naming lists, however each cyclone season begins with the next letter in a naming list carried over from the previous season. In part 4 we take a trip to southern Florida to explore its hurricane history.